Hallo, heute sind wir beim Flussdelfin. Today we recorded an Amazon River Dolphin um, in an aquarium setting because the water is clear. We tried to record them in the Peruvian Amazon where the water is like coffee with cream added. You can't see just a couple of centimeters underneath the water. And why this is important is we are working, my research collaborators and I are working to try to find a way to acoustically count the dolphins by their sounds. And this is because we don't know how many of these dolphins are in the wild. They don't have endangered species protection because they are listed by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature as data deficient. So we're trying to come up with a way to count them using sound. However, the sounds change very much if they turn their head just a little bit from away from the microphone. And because of their bodies, they can curve and turn and so it's really difficult even using multiple microphones to count how many of these animals are in the water. So we're hoping from the data we collected today, for example, where we can actually see when the dolphin is looking at a hydrophone or when he's turned away, what the shape of that wave, uh, the time waveform, will be when we look at it on the computer and use that information to help us improve our model to count dolphins acoustically in the wild. So this is one of those research projects that needed the help of a zoo. And as far as I know, there's only two zoos in the world that have an Amazon river dolphin in their care. This zoo and one in Iquitos in Peru. So overall, in my opinion, zoos are a wealth of stored information. They provide a great avenue for researchers to learn about their animals in a controlled environment where they may not be able to get to that data in the wild. So for example, with the Amazon River Dolphin, this is again where if I could not have had access to a dolphin where you could see them in clear water, I wouldn't be able to get this information of what their click is like um, when they're what we call on axis looking directly at that hydrophone. I think zoos, not just with dolphins, but I think with all species provide a great chance to study behavior that you would not get to see if you were out in the in the natural habitat studying them. And I've noticed, at least as far as dolphins are concerned, like with Terciops, the bottomless dolphin, the behavior displayed in an aquarium setting is very similar to the behavior displayed when they're out in the ocean. So I've also spent some time recording dolphins in the ocean. Some research that's conducted in a zoological setting actually helps wild populations. So for example, with the Amazon River Dolphin, there was a study done at the Duisburg Zoo that documented how much fish that a river dolphin needs to eat in order to survive and go about its daily business. And in the end, it's just a, a very like 2% of their entire body weight per day. Now this information can be used to educate local people that live in the same habitat of river dolphins to not kill the dolphins because some of the fishermen feel that the dolphins are competition eating the same fish that they are and they have started in the last couple of years in the Peruvian Amazon to intentionally kill the dolphins, intentionally poison them. But if we can let them understand that these dolphins aren't eating that much fish at all and that they're not really a threat, then what we've learned in the zoo setting then actually helps dolphins in the wild. So I spent 13 years working as a professional dolphin trainer um, at an aquarium in New York and a couple places in Mexico and in the Florida Keys. And when I was in the, like in Mexico and the Florida Keys, we worked with dolphins in um, open ocean lagoons where there was fencing. 
And sometimes at night we would put a dolphin in one lagoon and wake up in the morning when we went into work and they'd be in another lagoon where they went in with one of their friends. But we never would like see them leave. They never left. They just changed where we put them to bed at night. We also would take them out to scuba dive with like guests or just out to practice or to snorkel. And whenever they followed the boat out, they always followed the boat back. They could have left, but they never did even if there were other wild dolphins. Now, I did not work at this facility in Honduras, but I know that they take their dolphins out on a regular basis to scuba dive or snorkel or whatever. And one day, a wild dolphin joined them, the ones in human care, and swam back in, and then he would not go out. So there was a wild dolphin moving in. Wenn euch das Video gefallen hat, dann würde ich mich über ein Like sehr freuen. Und wenn ihr noch Fragen habt, schreibt sie einfach in die Kommentare. Und damit ihr kein Video mehr verpasst, abonniert einfach den Kanal.